Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. Elon Paul here, and we're doing episode six of my normal playthrough. As I promised in my last episode, I went ahead and did some upgrades. It's not going to see much in here, but I did get some of this, you know, moving along, and I filled in all the gaps over here. We have a little more storage space now. At least that's something, but it's not enough, and I'll probably have to do some more upgrades later on, but we'll get to that later. So we are at a good spot right now. We are going to be, I'm sitting here sitting on top of the ship getting ready. We're going to go in here and talk to someone. There he is right there. It's actually got it highlighted now. Mission, visit the mission board because we have to bring up our Corvax reputation. So we're going to be doing that this episode and proceeding on with the Artemis missions. All right, so we got to choose something that's going to bring us up one more level. Um, Corvax is what we're looking for. We don't worry about the rest. So we'll be doing this one. This is close up in the We're going to take a photo on an airless world. So let's go ahead and get that done. Should be the last one I have to do because I fought off some pirates before and I actually raised my reputation. So we don't do, do anything more. So that's pretty cool. We need a low atmosphere planet. As you saw, it just told me that it's in another part of the galaxy. We're going to have to leave this system. It's a shame. I really like this system, but we'll be coming back. All right, here. All right, so it's already telling me to go to that system right down there. So let's go ahead. Roragri? Let's say Roragri. I think that's what we'll call it. on our way. So apparently there's a planet here that'll have no air. I actually like those kind of planets. They're good for sentinel battles because you can float really long and stay above all the mayhem. Actually found one recently in a... Let me see. I guess it was an anomaly mission. There's a planet in the system that has uh, both aggressive sentinels and low atmosphere. Oh, need space station over there. We'll take a look at that just a so, let's take a look. First, we're going to scan. Oh, it says target planet located. It's not directing me towards it. I don't see any icon, so I guess we just still have to find it on our own. Overgrown. Should be one really close by. Oh, that might be it. Let's see. There it is. That's the place we're going to head. We're going to head there in just a second. Let's take a look at the space station. Check that out. Look at that structure. I don't know if I've seen one like this, even in my space station tours. I'm not sure if I've seen one like this. I'm sure you have. Ooh. I like the purple interior. Purple and red. Very nice. Really sharp. We won't get out long just for a moment. We're going to take a look at the Let's see conflict on Troubled. Economy, engineering, and sustainable. So it's probably a two-star system. Not bad. Not bad. Very pretty. All right, let's go ahead for our planet. Just need to take a picture of it. Uh, what's this one? Let's just take a quick peek, because maybe it's also a low atmosphere. Shattered. Not usually. That's just a uh, an anomalous planet, if you will. Off we go. All right, so we're going to check out Bursal. We'll get a picture of the planet. We're not too terribly far out from it. Then rather than go back to the space station, I don't know if this is a Corvax system. I didn't take a look. I'd have to go back in the video myself and take a peek at it. But we'll go back to the system we were just at because I kind of like that system. And we're going to go ahead and uh, get our reputation rank up a little bit. All right. Wasn't quite aimed right. No problem. A little rusty. Been playing a lot of other games lately, as you might be aware. All right, here we go. Now I made some adjustments. You're going to see some adjustments from episode episodes four and five to this one, number six. I've adjusted my graphics on this a little bit. I kind of toned it down a little bit, as well as adjusted some of the recording methods that I'm using to get better quality. You're going to hopefully see a lot less screen tearing going on. 
and hopefully we'll get better, better visuals. Things won't get all blotchy looking while you're watching it, or pixelated as the case may be. So we just need to land. Actually, we don't need to land, as we've learned. You just need to take a picture. Let's just pull back. We'll take a snapshot. Ooh. You see those crystals there? Yeah. Let's go land. Because those are worth something. Hopefully there's no sentinels on this planet. I didn't check. Gotta keep a close eye open. Make sure no sentinels pop up. Smallest planet, huh? Keep it going. Keep it going. I think there was one. Nope, there's not one behind it, but these two here. These glowing crystals are very, very, uh, they're not rare, but you don't come across them too often. Right. Nice. So these are worth pretty good. The 150,000 feet for the geodesite. Gold nuggets are worth their value in gold, so I'm going to go ahead and take them because I need some gold. Always need some. Good for building materials. All right. Take advantage of what you can get. I mean, this early in your game, you're going to need as much as you can get. All right, we're in the atmosphere. Let's go ahead and get back into the galaxy map and go back where we started. So that was the planet right here. That's where, uh, pardon me, solar system right here that we were at last. We're going to head right back there and we'll stop at the space station. Alright. So we build up our reputation with the Corvax. We get in there and we can go ahead and get some... Talk to the fellow back on the planet and we'll be able to get further into our Artemis, Artemis mission. Now I do want to complete the Artemis mission because I... Let me see, it's the space stations down here. Oh, no. I want to complete the Artemis mission because obviously you get... A lot of stuff along the way which helps your character out and doing everything. Can't tell which way's up sometimes on these space stations anymore. You should be able to tell real easily. Alright. Always lands us at the furthest uh, landing pads. Rarely will you even get to the second row and you never get up to the back row. Don't know why. Very odd. Okay, so Corvax reputation. Close up beignets. Okay. Did it not take the picture? It really wanted me on the planet taking the picture? Did I mess that up? <laughs> oh, hey, you know what we can do, though? Mess that up, but we can go straight to the system without using our hyperdrive. Because we landed at the space station, so that's a good thing. Kind of dumb, but a good thing. Look for a previous system. We'll get there a little bit quicker this way. So, taking a photo while in the atmosphere does not seem to be working anymore. Now, that worked on our expedition, our last expedition back in February, was it, I think? Or Omega? And, um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be working. So that may be a problem of doing a speed run on the Omega expedition again on the rerun. And we just have to keep our... Eyes peeled on that. No idea where I'm going here. So you got a backspace uh, that is a rear parking space here, but only when you appear in the space station this way. Interesting. All right, so back out to that same planet, and this time we have to land. Big picture. We landed next last time, but we'll probably have to take a picture while we're on the planet. So let's get a little fancy with the picture since we're spending this much time doing this baloney. We'll go ahead and make it a kind of a fancy picture. All right. Oh. Be wonderful if we found some more crystals, wouldn't it? Is that? I think it is. No. Yes? 
it's probably just an abandoned uh, yeah that's an abandoned facility with eggs and stuff like that we're not interested in that I would be at another time I know those things are handy to get but I don't care alright got some nice rings in the background let's go ahead and make this a fancy picture shall we yep 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 okay so remember I have a hotkey set up right let's do this there we go what do you think nice picture <laughs> getting fancy anything around Oh, okay. Now it's taking us straight up to the space station. That's fine. Big it's not a big big. Because the mission agent that's here, I think this is a Corvax system, if I'm not mistaken. Check over here. There you go. Corvax system, as it says. So we just gotta hit another Corvax agent, and we're good. But we'll use the terminal. I want to go back to the other the other system because. I like the planetary arrangement there. They have got some, got some good planets. And the economy, I think, is better as well. So, you know, let's keep that in mind. Always a good thing. I do have a chart for a crashed ship that I have not yet done. And I noticed my... I've got to recharge my pulse engines here. So we'll use some pyrite. That. There we go. Go back here into the uh, cigarette. Just kidding. Just kidding. Kind of a weird shape, isn't it? You know, if it was more rounded, it would remind me of that, uh... Is it, is it Major? I think it was? No, no, no. One of the Star Trek movies where they save the planets to save the whales. No, save the whales to save the planet. Had that backwards. Yeah. There's that. Alright, let's go ahead and hit this guy up. We'll go ahead and turn on our mission. Now he'll have four different missions, so we're going to go elsewhere. So you see it says handed missions. Close up in A's. And there we go. Now I'm not going to do any more missions because we're done. So now we got to go consult the galaxy map. We want to go back to the system we were at, which is... Hmm. Hold on. I think that's this system here. You notice there's two different ones, right? I, so I've seen that they still have this problem. I don't think it makes a difference. Let's just go. I guess we'll find out. Very odd. Now I have the vol volume on the game turned up a little bit. Hopefully it's not too much and hopefully you can hear me okay. And I'll be doing back-to-back -back episodes, so you're not going to see the back-to-back -back episodes, but I've got some time today, so I'm going to be recording several episodes in a row. Yep, that's how we do it. Okay, return to the alien life. Alright, so where to? I think he was over this way. Yep, there it is. Go for the Artemis symbol. And potential assistance, it's called, right? Proved our standing with the Corvax. This guy shouldn't just brush me off this time. He may still be a little disgruntled, but he'll be good. All right. Still a little bit of hesitancy. Like I said, I'm adjusting things because I think resources on the computer are getting a little bit. 
hoping to make it a little better as time goes by. Here we go. Analyst. As I approach the life form, the lights in its shell casing begin to brighten and constrict. Chattering noises issue forth. They hold out a scanner. It is unclear if Artemis Translator is working. So we're going to ask for information about the star system. The life form's chattering ends. They stare at me with disappointment. The life form's shell casing begins to dilate and flicker. They attempt to scan my scanner, but it is clear that my tool interferes with its own. We're going to allow them. I allow the life form to scan me. They create a three dimensional cross section of my body, exosuit, skin, organs, all included, refining the model through occasional projections. Eventually, it is complete. Looks happy, doesn't he? This, this data is invaluable to Corvex Convergence. Thank you, Traveler. I will, of course, assist you. So we give him the star chart. I ask the life form to decode the star chart and provide a route to Artemis' location. Location does not exist, Traveler. Ew. Nothing is more tragic tragic than a corrupted piece of code. We could ask if they could have made a mistake, but that would be insulting to our quarterback, so we're just going to thank them and leave. Good luck in your journey. Please feel welcome to return and deliver a blood sample. Huh. Oh yeah, I got right. Alright, so we're going to return to space and bring the news to Artemis. That it's not good news, obviously. So, alright, let's head out. And off we go. So we don't have to go far. We just got to go up into the atmosphere. And see what happens. There's my message frequency. There's Artemis. There you are. Bzzzt. I found high ground, I think. When you arrive, I'll fire my multi-tool into the air to mark my location. What's wrong? Why aren't you saying anything? Tell Artemis the truth. I tell Artemis the locals could not decipher their star chart. The alien even went so far as to claim those stars did not exist. That's impossible. I can't have traveled that far from charted space. You found my ship. Ask how Artemis got there. As I speak, the line begins to crackle with interference. Artemis looks up at the stars in panic. The stars? It's, they've altered since I made that chart. Blinked out and... It's, how is this possible? What's happening to me? I need to get out of here. I need to... It is quiet at first, but it is there, unmistakable, growing steadily louder with each passing moment, a sound beneath their words, as if... a sound as if glass could scream. So we ask what is happening. They're coming for me. I can see them, smell them. I discover the glyphs for a portal traveler. A gateway between worlds. I thought it would lead me to another kind, another of our kind, but even if the voice was real. The pathway collapsed while I was still inside. I found this place in the darkness. I thought perhaps it was a planet. So wrong. I, I can see their faces. I, there are seeds of glass within there. We're gonna remain. We're gonna ask for the glyphs. They're gone. My data fragmented in the. Portal is probably what he said. I just wanted to discover worlds. I wanted to tra to find other travelers. I didn't. Psst. Sixteen. Psst. Warn your face. It. Psst. Please, not yet. I'm not. Psst. The signal cuts off. As it crackles into oblivion, I hear a name through the static. Apollo. Register the ID. Frequency for Apollo has been added to my hollow terminus contacts. Whoa, so Artemis is stuck. Something's coming for him. We don't know what this is. So it says to bring this news to, to Artemis, uh, pardon me, to Nada and Polo, which uh, anomaly's over there, but you know, we can just pull it in. We want to check it out. This is a way for us to get a little more uh, Quicksilver, some more Nanites. Didn't realize we had almost 10,000 nanites. We're doing pretty good. Got a good amount of credits. I do want to use... See, my inventory is nearly full on my ship. I do want to use the chart I got. Crashed ship. I don't see it in my inventory for some reason. Did I already use it? Oh, you know what? I did use it. And you know what I found? I found an abandoned building instead. Yeah, yeah. That didn't work out really well, did it? <laughs> Alright, up we go.
Entity Nada. What have you learned, Traveler? What generates Artemis Entity Signal? Mention the portal. I tell Nada how we failed to understand Artemis' location. I explain their strange messages, Apollo, and the portal glyphs. Nada pauses. Their lights blink as they process this information. Artemis slips between worlds into the data fall. Our home lives in these spaces, but these holds are stable, small. Nada is worried, Traveler. Cracks between iterations should not widen. It will not help us. Artemis Entity still does not remember Nada? Say they did not. This is a puzzle. Trap? Or tragedy? Apollo Entity is unknown to Nada. More puzzling still. If Traveler Entity is curious, Nada has advice. The rampant crimson is the work of Atlas Falsity. Other Korvax say deity. Nada knows better. Atlas False Entity hunts Nada, but Traveler may seek them out, draw them away. Okay, well that's interesting. Let's see, we got our Quicksilver, and a little bit of, uh, Nanites. Boundaries, oh, here's Polo. Boundaries are strange things, Traveler friend. Most things stay where they belong. Other things, our home, Atlas, and now Artemis friend, slip between. Curious. So do we ask about all this stuff here? We're going to ask about portals, of course. Just devices, Traveler friend. To be understood, copied, advanced. That is all we can do with this universe, yes? Appreciate it. And that's it. Just wants us to appreciate that. In case you're wondering where I'm going, I'm going to go visit Ares over here. Turn in some information, see if we can get a little more nanites out of them. Not Times uh, milestone data. And not bad. Got about 300 nanites. That's pretty good. What about Helios? Okay. Well, we have no new discoveries to give, so we're just going to walk away. Alright. So we're done there. Okay. Looking at the Nexus, now the day I'm doing this happens to be a Friday. I don't see the anomaly mission up there yet. So, we'll keep an eye open. It is earlier in the day. Perhaps sometime this afternoon it should show up. We'll see. Eh, ran out of run juice. <laughs> Alright, off we go. So, the next stage of our journey, as we exit the anomaly. There we go. What's next? Let's check, shall we? So, go to the log. Looks like... We have to activate and We have to go to, go to a hollow terminus. No. We've got one discovered, so to speak. We're going to go ahead and do this anyway. There we go. Over there. So, that's an observatory. That will find something on another planet if we want to, but we're not going to do that. We'll go to the hollow terminus instead. Whoa, okay, where's it taking us? Ah, taking us to this planet. Fascinating. So this planet doesn't have anything on it. It's kind of an avoided planet. It's got a couple creatures on it, but it doesn't usually have any viable bases. But the Hollow Terminus is one of the things it will still have. And in we go. Slow down. I forgot that this is a proximate location, so we need to scan. Take a look. Should be able to see it at some point. Is that it over there? Ah, there it is. Actually, that's the spot. I've had I've been to planets where there's been multiple hollow terminuses near each other, so we're still gonna scan when we get here and take a look. Yep, that's it. We'll let it finalize. There we go. This is powerful enough, we should be able to jet all the way to the top. There we go. Deal. So here we go. All terminus activated. It says the tower hosts a powerful transmit transmitter. We've already gone through all that, so I'll just go ahead and tune into Apollo. Step onto the platform. See who we got. There he is. This is our first meeting of Apollo. The transmission is silent. The stranger just stares at me. Read Apollo. Oh, nope, we're going to stare right back at him. I 
identify yourself, Arya, in this call. Say you are a friend of Artemis. No, you're not. Argue with them. Call yourself whatever you want, but you can't hide the truth. A friend is just a label. A pretense to make you feel better about being alone. Why are you contacting me anyway? Is Artemis behind this? I haven't changed my mind. I don't care about their weird dreams. I'll meet if I'm paid to meet. Even this conversation is a waste of valuable time. Say Artemis is in trouble. I tell Apollo that Artemis is in trouble, that they attempted to use a portal and became stranded in some distant and uncharted world, disappearing from the network. Apollo's demeanor changes. They appear uncomfortable at the news. Send me your data logs. Let me see this for myself. We're going to upload the data. Apollo studies the log, pausing and replaying the various segments of static and distortions. They turn to me with a glow of excitement. These noises, they sound just like the echoes of Sentinel events. You've seen them before, of course. Drones that appear from nowhere if you interfere with their precious planets. With this data, it's distorted, inverted. There's a lot to gain if we figure out how the Sentinels appear so quickly. And this, the portals, perhaps they're the key. I'll agree. So what do you say? Do you want to work together on this? Be partners? Accept. If you're going to work with me, we need to expand your base of operations. I'll send you to, con to a contact of mine. I'll supply you with what you need. Just remember to be polite. In the communication. As the hologram recedes, Paolo's head turns to the side ever so slightly, as if sighing, saddened. Perhaps it was nothing. A ghost in the machine. Hmm. Was it? Okay. So we gotta head out. It's time to expand our base a little bit. We've been wanting to do that for a while. Nice, huh? Yep, gotta get those drops, man. Alright, off we go. This is actually kind of not, not a bad planet. Alright. Locate them on the galaxy map when in space. Okay, let's go to the galaxy map. See what we got. Okay, so we're going to. A, I don't think we've been to that system yet. Let's see. Nope, we have not. Okay, the UNZ6 system. That's a very strange name. Let's see what we find out. So we will meet a contact at the space station here. And that will be a base. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Overseer. That's the one. Base Overseer is what we're after now. And now we can start really getting some stuff and expand the base and everything like that. So that's going to be good. And we can do all the side missions while we're at it, too. We can really get ourselves moving along here. Hey, looks like we got a pirate battle. Now, I don't really have the strongest weapons in the world, but we'll do what we can. If I can get my self acclimated. There we go. Okay, we're good. Hey, okay, one down. Where's the other guy? Nope. There's another one really close by. Should be right there. Now, again, this is normal mode. This isn't any permadeath, so we shouldn't be in too much trouble here. Pirate transponder. Nice. Ooh. Him. We got a few of them here. Hey, he's got my ship. Wait a second here. <laughs> Another pirate transponder. Those things are going to be very handy to turn in later to get my reputation up to some. Gotta be careful. Don't want to hit other ships. There's a pirate right there. Head over there because we need something from It's like we have someone right there. There we go. Another pirate transponder. Nice. Oop, these guys came at me. Good. We don't have ourselves a freighter yet, you know. Maybe this will be an opportunity. We will take the channel open. We can get some supplies out of these guys, if anything. All right. Now, I will go after. I'm going to sooner or later get myself a freighter that'll be one of the dreadnoughts. That's what I'm really like to get. But we'll have to have something in the meantime. So, let's see what this is. One, at least an A-class freighter. 
but we'll upgrade to an S-Class Dreadnought down the way. Just not today, probably, right? Five starships, nice. Let's see what our inventory shows. I do have two storage augmentations we should think about. Okay, suspicious packet. Let's put that in my main inventory of my exosuit. There we go. Six pirate transponders. Very nice. Very nice. I don't think we're going to need all these effigies, but I'm hoping if we get some cargo containers, we can really start moving along. But anyway, let's get out of here. All right, first things first. What kind of ship? C-Class. Eh, no. We're not going to get this. We'll take some stuff instead. Okay. Uh, wrong way. Up here. Hello, Commander Sivawik. Let's chat, shall we? No, I don't want your ship, but I'll take Eamon instead. So, we got a bulkhead, we got two Corvax things increased, we get 235 nanites, and how much gold? 371 gold, nice. So that's worth it. Got some ships that landed here, nothing special, I'm not going to worry about it. Ooh, but that's a pretty one, isn't it? Hmm. I did have someone leave a comment about getting a, maybe a hauler, because of the, uh, what do you call it, the cargo space would be better. But, you know, I'm just, I'm a stickler for having a ship that I could travel far with. That is definitely Explorer class or a fighter that I can actually use to fight off pirates. Since I'm in normal mode, I'm not as concerned, but I like the maneuverability better. And haulers just, they don't do it for me. I mean, thank you. It's a great idea. I have no nothing against that, but no thank you. All right, let's head over to the space station. Let's see what we got here. Go through the edge of this asteroid field. Hopefully, we don't hit anything. All right, what do we got? Kind of a neat one, almost like the old style, but it's got a ring around the bottom. It's pretty. Cool. Let's see. Kind of a plain look to it. We don't have any of those weird colored hazes, except this one's more like a silver or white haze. Oh, a little bit of green. A little bit of green over there. You see that? It's interesting. Slightly green tint. Interesting. All right. Let's see. It looks like our guy is all the way over there. So let's head over there. Now I'm going to check out the terminal. I am looking for more exosuit upgrades, and I'm willing to pay money for it. Plus, we need to sell off some stuff, I think. I think that'll be a smart idea. Life form, you arrived later than anticipated. Data has been obtained, exchanged, utilized. New tools await you as instructed. Corvax has plans to update both base and exosuit. Where is your base site and what sort of hazard protection meets your needs? All right, let me point out something very, very clear right here before we choose something. Did you notice the fact that this is not, not a Gek Overseer? This is the first time I've played any game where the Overseer wasn't Gek. I've got a Corvax one. Isn't that cool? So they made a change to that. That's really, really cool. Okay, so uh, heat, cold, toxic, or radiation protection. What are we looking for? Um, I'm going to go... I think I've got radiation and toxic protection, if I remember correctly. I know I've got toxic. Pretty sure I've got radiation. Heat and cold, I think I've even got those. Let's just go radiation to play it safe. I don't know. All right, so he's gonna join me. So we got some radiation protection. Let me check my suit. I got cold. I got toxic. I didn't have any heat. Okay, but now we have radiation protection. So we're gonna go ahead and install this in my suit. Absolutely a great idea. Keep the Artemis translator and just move it over. Uh, what are these? So let's see what we get out of that. I didn't know. All right, so I got a repair kit. Ooh, that's handy. <laughs> this ship is full. What we get over here? What? Dream manipulated package man. I can't wait until we get something. I think we got a gravitino ball out. We have a little bit of paraffinium. Let's see. All right, 
We'll worry about it later. Hopefully we'll get a cargo container soon. We can start packing some of this stuff away that we don't need to carry with us. All right, so he's going to join us at our base, and we're going to get a base computer. All right, so we have another spot down there. It looks like it's heading us to the terminal. Right? Yes, it is. What? Oh, I met 10 aliens. Isn't that nice? Okay. So we're going to go back to our base via the terminal. Or we do. Let's sell some things that we don't need. Uh, let's see. Definitely keeping that. We're going to sell the geodesite for now because it's really worth a lot. That's going to give us some money. The Herox, we're going to go ahead and sell. I'm going to hang on to the Aronium. I have plans for that. And we're going to hang on to the cargo bulkhead because those are hard to come by. They're worth a good amount of money. But once we get a freighter man, we're going to need those. So, good. Okay, in the ship inventory. Let's check things out. Uh, let's see, we have uranium, pyrite, copper, cobalt. Bunch of salvage data. We're going to need that later. We have two walker brains. I do want to keep them both. Once I get start getting more, I won't have to worry as much. Viking effigies. Let's sell off three of those. And the gravitino balls, I'm going to sell off... I'm going to sell off three of those as well. The boundary maps are very handy. For now, early game, I'm going to keep them. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of at least one of the hard frame engines. Again, same thing with the Gek Relics. We're going to sell off three of those. Hang on to the microprocessors, the inverted mirror, the radiant shards, and the Atlantidium. All right, so we sold off a lot of the useless stuff that we don't need anymore. Okay, anything we want to buy? Uh, really not a whole lot here we need. Okay. All right, good. Then we're done. Let's go ahead and take this over to our base. Let's see. First base. Wait a minute. Wait. A minute. Which one? Did we set up a base over here? Now I don't know which one to go to. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> this is probably not where we're going. We're going to go to this one. Sub-Zero Planet. Wind Tree. Hold on. What about this one? Blissful. Low Sentinels. Paradise Planet. Yeah, I think I know where we're going. <laughs> the other one was a starter base. To get my, myself a base going. This one was the actual base that I'm getting real things going at. I love Paradise Planet, so it's where we want to be. Eventually, won't pop up in our base. I hope. Now, we do have a portal at the base. I think we do. It's actually been a few weeks since I've actually uh, been on this save and checked things out, so... It might be building it on the background. Maybe they dismantled it and they're now putting it back together again. Ah, this base. Yes, of course. Not much to it, huh? Looks like we've got a good amount of power going on. It's draining the power. Big time. Oh, because it's nighttime. So what we do is we do this. Go into here. I should tell you... Oh, that's not what we're looking for. Let's get out of there. Let's go to the battery. I think we have to. should tell us... We got 30... It's 33 minutes until it actually is completely drained. And if we go to the solar panels, they'll tell us how many hours remaining. 9 minutes and 47 seconds. So we've got... It, it'll it'll save it. So we, we're okay. Alright. So this base, as you know, even though it's a paradise planet and we've got it in a nice area, we don't have a lot of room for everything yet. So we really should expand our base, don't you think? I think we should. So let's make this particular base a little bit bigger. We need to do a construction terminal. But um, we're going to go ahead and build out the base a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, we're going to end up putting our landing pad over this way. So this will give us a little more room. Let's put up some walls. We don't have any glass yet or windows. We haven't gotten those things yet. That's okay. Here, and I think right there. Okay, let's put a door right here. And we'll need... Let's go into the uh, build mode. There we go. There we go. 
side. We're going to go back into the build mode for just a moment. Into the deletion area. There we go. Okay, we're all set here. So this looks a little bit better. Got a little more room. We don't have lighting, but we're going to acquire that over time. We got these cap lighting and ceiling lights, stuff like that. We don't have a whole lot. So we'll have to hook these up to power if we want some real lighting. But I'm not too concerned about that. Should you? So let's go back over here, get our construction terminal going. We need chromatic metal, pure ferrite. We've already got that. Um, where do we want to put him? Let's put him right over. Yeah, yeah, back over here. This will be good. All right, construction terminal, terminal is complete. Okay, so we have an active. It tells us to go in here, expanding the base. We need to hire an overseer. Well, that's weird. I thought we did. It says the overseer's at our space station, so maybe we will get a GEC overseer. So the person that was helping us was just simply helping us. So maybe we're going to end up with a GEC overseer. Let's go to our space station, which is the current system. There we go. So we can get in our ship and fly up there. We can just, you know, do it the sneaky way. I like the sneaky way better. You appear almost immediately at the space station. And looks like our guy is over there. Potential overseer recruit is a thousand units away that way. What? All right, I've got to check this out. Hold on. Oh, I see. See, that's all you had to do. So it really wanted us to fly up here, but too bad for you. Oh, it put us on the second row. Very nice. That was weird. A little bit of a glitch there. All right, so our overseer is up here. Just had to uh, fool me there just a little bit. And it's a gag. All right, well, I was hoping for a Corvax this time. Okay, it is what it is. Navigator... Roint. Roint I'm going to call him Roint. Is it really you? Forgive me, I've been searching for such a long time. I'm contracted to aid you in this and every cycle. Don't worry, everything was paid for a long time ago. It's all quite above board. As the stranger speaks, a smell assaults me, a pheromone infesting my brain, giving me memories of places I never visited, of actions I never took. Of myself in a mirror, aged and alone, of this geck cradling their fallen brethren, of a bargain made many years from now, a contract signed across the cosmos. The vision ends, and the Overseer remains. The Overseer promises to expand my base, allowing me to recruit other workers. They require a construction terminal, which we just made, to get started. So we're going to hire them. There is something compelling about this geck. They, feel, they shall feel at home in my home. I will be at my station before you know it. See you soon, friend. And we're going to leave. All right. That is always the craziest thing. It's like you paid for this in the future, but this is the past. It's, it's like, what is going on here? Oh, no. So let me just check this terminal real quick. No, not you. That. Thank you. Just want to see what's in here. Yeah, nothing of note. Okay. Because sometimes they have... Um, exosuit charts in them. So, I like to check that out. Alright, we're going to head back to our base, right? Oh, that ship's landing right on top. Sorry about that, dude. It's almost smushed. Let's take the portal back to our base. And current system. On our way. So, we have a base overseer now. And this is where we start getting our upgrades for our base. For free. Hoping for the cargo container, because I really want to dump some inventory. I don't need to be carrying paraffinium around with me all over the place, that's for sure. The gold and silver, I mean, it's handy for building materials and for, you know, upgrades and stuff like that, but as long as you know where it is. Honestly, you don't really need anything. I didn't leave anything in my refiner. No? Okay, good. Alright, let's see him. There he is, Navigator Rointy. Roint, Roint, sorry. You have so much to learn, so much to see. This place will be our home against the infinite. Take this glass and let starlight flood blah, 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 flood our jolly home. 
picks up the glass. Glass. Frost crystals. But we don't need to use frost crystals. Everything pours through glass in the end. But there's time enough for that. There are other things we have to do. If you prepare chromatic metal, I will use it at the calibrated science terminal suitable for a Corvax entity. The Corvax have suffered terribly at the hands of my people. Be kind to them, I beg of you. The overseer asked me to gather chromatic metal in preparation for the recruitment of Corvax scientists. We accept, of course. Navigator Roint is already making themselves useful. The science terminal, a new Corvax guest, and all for just a handful of chromatic metal. Okay. So. We've collected it. We're just waiting for the... Navigator to recognize this. Any moment. There we go. Collected, and... Here to pop up over his head. And... Come on. Anytime. There you go. Thank you. There you are again, Traveler. I'm sure you have the required materials this time. The Overseer speaks strangely, implying that we have performed this encounter before. I have no memory of such meetings. I ask who paid for the, for the service they are performing for me. They laugh and claim that my child did many years from now. I do not know what they're talking about. The Overseer asked me for the chromatic metal. I feel like I give it to them. Perfect friend. I knew you would succeed. Just when I need to finish the science terminal plans. Okay, we got a science terminal now, or we can make it anyway. We have littered the universe in our greed, Traveler. This planet is no exception, but there is much that can be done with litter. Make your way to an abandoned structure and harvest the data from the terminals. I shall use it to fashion us plans for a storage container. Oh, yeah. Navigator Roint is reflective for a gek. They almost seem to regret the greed that characterizes their people. They wish to make something new from the remains of the old. Is this just greed in disguise or something else? Whatever their motive, the Overseer claims that I will find data for a storage container blueprint in a nearby structure. You won't regret it, friend. I've marked you for us. I marked you a site that seems to be ripe for exploitation. Okay. While we do that, we're going to go ahead and build our science terminal, chromatic metal, magnetized ferrite yet again. And we're going to put it right next to his station here. Right about there. I want to put them right next to each other. There we go. Okay, so we're not going to do the scientist yet. We're going to go back to expanding the base. I'm going to get the building materials because I really want my storage container. Alright, where is it? There it is. That way. How far? 25 minutes by foot. Take our ship. Launch thrusters are really low. I think I might be getting one more launch out of them. Now remember, you're going to come across structures here on the way. Like maybe you'll see a depot or something like that. Like, hey, I can do some damage here and get some good... Don't do it. Because those structures are needed in many of your later missions. And if you destroy it now, you can't destroy it later to get the stuff. And then you have to find one on your own, and that's even harder. I thought we were that close, but I guess not... Yeah, there we go. Slow down. Okay, so it's an approximate location. We've got to take a look around. We are scanning. Whoops. I mean to do that. Slow down. Oh, that might be good. Let's check, shall we? That's really far away to be it. No, that's not going to be it. Oh, it's right there. There it is. Why oh, didn't show up when I did that before? Now, this is one of those instances where we can get Whispering Eggs if we wish. Whispering Eggs can come in handy. Um, do I have the inventory space for it? We do. Yeah, if you guys haven't gathered Whispering Eggs before, this is fun. This is a bigger, bigger layout here, so we can get a lot of them if we wish. You want to use your mining laser, so make sure it's up to charge. Uh, down here, charge, mining. Uh, use the condensed. Okay, so we're all set there. And you're going to have to run around. So as soon as you shoot these eggs and gather the ball inside, um, you're going to get approached or the... the horrors are going to come out of the ground. They're going to remind you of something from a movie. 
don't worry about that. Just avoid them. They can hurt, they can run into you, they can spit venom at you and damage you a little bit. If you just walk around, keep changing direction, and avoid them, you can do this real, real easily. Some people like to dig a hole underneath the eggs and harvest them from underneath, hoping that the creatures don't get them. Don't, don't go crazy. Don't. Just try not to panic, okay? Watch. Pick it up, larval core, there they are. Look familiar, don't they? Just keep going. One. Let's go to the next group. I can't move. There we go. There's another one. Go to the next group. Get another one. Just gather one at a time. If you see something, go to the next group. Don't worry about it. See, I'm going to get somebody to come at me from over here. See? Get up. Just keep going. These guys don't turn easily. See? He's trying to face me so he can jump at me. But if you keep turning, they can't hit you. Pretty simple. Now, the only problem you might run into is that there's sentinels around here. They may get angry at you for doing this. See, I think I just got hit by one of them, but it didn't even damage me. And after a little while, you're going to clear out all the eggs. See? One at a time, just do it. Some of them don't drop eggs. There we go. Shoot it, gather it. Shoot it, gather it. Whoop, see? And this one's clear. This one... Got one left. This one has one left. Turn, see? We just avoided one again. This one I don't think has any. No? It really, it's really not that bad. This one's clear. Oh, wait, wait, oh, there is one. See? Look at that. One more. More. Go up here. Nope, oh, that's clear. And we're just circling around. We run a little bit, we circle around. There's none here. None here. Just got a little bit of carbon by accident. See that guy there? See, he's trying to face us. He's got the last one there. This one has none left, right? Yep, none left. This one has none left. And this one has one. Okay, grab the last one. Now, if you're done, you can either go inside, or you can just fly up to the top of the structure, hang out, and then look down, and if there's eggs remaining, it will show you. There are no eggs remaining. We've got them all. And just wait. Just hang out up here. Now, you can shoot the horrors if you want. You can break them down. But if you're far enough away, they can't spit at you. And they can't jump at you while you're standing up here. Let's see how many eggs we got. See what their value is? 700,000 for a stack of them. But you can also put them in your refiner, and you can refine them into that. So that's something to keep thought of. So just a little bit, it'll tell you that they're all subsiding and they're going to dig themselves back into the ground and you're done. So you notice it wasn't really that intense. I don't think I even took any damage the whole time. Do, do, do. So just a couple more moments. As long as you're not antagonizing them and picking them up, there we go. Swarm subsiding. And take a look around. See the little green things? Those are the peep Those are the, uh, the safe creatures. See? They're all gone. No more. Now you can safely walk back in. Let's go ahead and take care of our life support. Uh, use dioxide. Alright, now, be careful when you walk in here. Sometimes there's a tendril hanging from the ceiling. It'll slap you when you walk in. Turn on your light if you don't have it turning on on its own in dark places. Go to the deserted terminal. Get rid of the goop that's on there, and you'll get the message. User identified. Terminal active. Accessing schematics. The place the Overseer has led me to has long since fallen into disrepair. Its panels are buried beneath the same oily, pulsating fauna that I have seen before in long abandoned buildings. The air is fetid and damp. I power up the terminal with little hope of success, but to my surprise, it buzzes noisily and springs to life. Analyze schematics. My Overseer's intuition has served me well so far. I shall have to trust that these schematics contained, contain the required data. 
having a little trouble today. Sorry about that. So we're done. So we got the data he was looking for. And if you look around, there's going to be a bunch of things in here. So let's go ahead and gather up, you know, anything we can find. Uh, terminals that are working, you'll get words from. Got a Viking word out of that one. Just keep a look low in the ground. There we go. Another terminal. So we can collect stuff from. And since this is a bigger structure, let's go to the other end and take a look. Again, watch out for tendrils hanging from the ceiling. I don't see any, so we're good. And just keep an eye, look for any boxes that are laying around. There's one right there. Got some condensed carbon. Anything on the walls? No. There's another box. Ah, research specimen will bring up my standing with the Viking. It's there. There we go. Right. Don't see any other boxes, it looks like. Oh, one more. One more. That guy. All right, that's it. And we do want to go outside. Outside, there'll be usually some buried technology. It's always handy to get. So exhaust your resources. Take a look. We've got another structure nearby if we want to check it out. Usually there's buried technology. Sometimes there's not. It's okay. But if it has this over here, this little, uh, what do they call this thing? save and chart device you go ahead and collect it you get your stuff and there's usually other boxes laying around not always but sometimes there we go excellent that's it so you want to check out the other structure to see what it is where'd it go over there let's check it out let's just see what it is and see if it's anything else. oh okay it's a communication uh, place and it's got the shelters over there so that'll be buried tech and some nanites is it really worth our time, though? At this time, I'm going to say no. Okay. Well, let's head back to the Overseer. We're going to turn in this data. We'll get our storage container. We're going to drop stuff off, and then we're going to call this episode complete. Hope you've enjoyed it. Gonna get our engines powered up a little bit tighter this time, a little bit higher. All right. Excellent. And we're coming in for a landing. All right. Now, we don't have a landing pad. We're going to use the one for the minor settlement that I stole. I think did I gather everything from over there. Yes, I did. Okay. Just want to make sure. All right. So, we're here. Go we'll see our... Friend at the terminal, there he is. You are back. I'm so glad, friend. I will exchange this storage blueprint as soon as I have the data. It is good to see the Gekka so invested in the success of our home. They are clearly happy to see me, energized for the task at hand. Give the data. Here is your blueprint, as promised. A trivial task. Their code was just sitting there to be manipulated. So now we have all nine storage containers. Isn't that fantastic? You know how much data that would have cost me? Unbelievable. So that's why you want to go through these. You get so many good things. Now then, he says, do you think, friend, that we should put the science terminal to use? Fill our home with the clicks and lights of the Corvax. It would be so lovely. The overseer feels the base would benefit from a Corvax scientist. They would like to see good use made of the blueprint they work so hard on. I agree. I am so glad we had this chat, friend. Okay, and that's it. So we're going to be doing the science mission next. Uh, let's go ahead and get a... Let me see what we can do. Let's see if I have the ability to drop one of these. So we do... Oh, do we already have a storage container out here someplace? Ugh. Do we have the zero? No, we don't have the zero. So we have to get the zero storage container. We haven't gotten that. But that's okay. We've got number one. So let's go ahead and drop one down. I'm going to put it right here. It needs power, so I'm going to put it right next to my base. And we're going to run some power to it. I'm not going to get all the other containers at this time. We need to run electrical wire. You'll notice that everything's on the other side of that wall there. I'm going to run there to there. And we're back up and running. So now we have a storage container. Now, we can only put stuff from our main inventory, that is our, our physical inventory on our person, into here. Um, what do we want to get rid of? I don't think we want to get rid of that of our main inventory, except maybe the cargo bulkhead. Hey, get back in. Except the cargo bulkhead. And if you highlight it, it tells you you can do a quick transfer with X. 
Uh, we're going to hang on to all these things down here because we need them. We don't need the Aronium. We'll put that in too. So we're going to go into our ship inventory and start pulling stuff out. Like we don't need a ton of wiring loops on us. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. The hard frame. We do need the pirate the chromatic metal. Let's get rid of the inverted mirror, the Atlantidium, radiant shards, Viking effigy. Let's store some of our salvage data in there too. We don't need all of it. Um, let's get rid of some of these. There we go. I'm going to take three of them. I'll keep two in my inventory. Uh, some upgrades, Gravitino Ball. We'll hang on to the Pirate Transponders now. Remember the Paraffinium I talked about. We'll hang on to the Copper. I seem to recall I needed that. Uranium we definitely need for the ship. I'm going to keep the Cobalts for now. Microprocessor. Oh, inventory's full on my person. Okay, so let's go ahead and dump some of the stuff in here. Real quick. There we go. Alright. Very nice. And the ship back to it. Microprocessors, the silver, and the gold. We're going to hang on to one of the brains, because I know I'm going to get a combat... Uh, what do you call it, a uh, scanner or receiver, I should say, so we can check things out. Not a teleport receiver. We have an economy scanner, I think, right? No, we don't even have that. Yeah, but when we get that, we're going to use it. The phosphorus we're going to put on our person. I don't know why it's in here. We're going to put this in the inventory. The pugnium. Okay, we'll hang on to the walker brain. Okay, all this stuff is definitely needed. I haven't decided whether I'm going to use the storage augmentation on the ship or not. I think I'm going to hang on to it for a better ship. So, oh, you can put it straight into the storage container. I didn't realize that. How stupid. All right, let's do the storage container real quick. I feel dumb. There we go. And I'm going to hang on to the phosphorus for recharging our suit. This is going to go over to our ship, the repair kit. Okay. Looks like this is nicely cleaned up. I'm going to take those eggs. Let me just take a look at how much nanites. I've got almost 10,000. We don't need nanites right now. So we put five in there. We'll get 250. So we get 50 per larval core. They're actually worth to me more for money now. So I'm going to hang on to it and sell them. Okay. All right, and that should do it for this episode. So fantastic. we got everything regenerated. We've got power really cooking along. We're all set there. Let me check to see how much power we're using. Okay, good. So we're using half power. So we're not going to worry about it just yet. Later on down the road, we might need more. All right, and we're in excellent shape. So to save the game, we're going to jump in and out of our ship. The game does auto-save, but it's a good idea to have your own main save like this. And then in the next episode, we're going to hire a scientist, and we're going to take it from there. All right, folks, I want to thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like what you've been seeing. The like really does help. Really appreciate that. It does help the channel quite a bit. And if you've been subscribed in the past and find yourself unsubscribed, YouTube has been doing that lately. Please resubscribe. I appreciate that. No reason to join the channel unless you really, really want to. But thank you very much, folks, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care, everybody.